What's up everybody? I'm Adam and you're watching the Model Aviator channel. This week we'll be reviewing a brand new release from E-Flight, the 1.1 meter Sportix sport plane. This one's going to be a little different format than you're used to. It's not going to be our typical new release announcement and review. You'll notice I don't have an airplane sitting in front of me. That is because unfortunately I made an error and that error caused a crash on the second flight. Thankfully, Heidi got some great footage of the first flight. It was a pretty long flight. I did get a chance to put the airplane through its paces during that flight. So we can give you some pretty accurate flight impressions of how the sport it flies. We took pictures of the assembly so we can cover that. We can talk about the specs. I can tell you what the features are. And we can tell you the setup that we use. So this, while different, should still be very informative for you. Now just know that when these airplanes are in the warehouse, we're going to get another one and we'll do another video on it. One of the features is it's rated for 3 and 4S. The flight you're gonna to see today, we flew it on 4S. In the second video, we'll fly it on both 3 and 4S, and if there's any setup changes that we've decided to make, we'll tell you about those then. So just know that that one is coming eventually. For now, we'll start this the way we always do. Here's how the Sportix goes together. The part count of the Sportix is quite low. You'll start with the main gear, you put that in place, you'll bring in a gear plate and attach that with four screws. The tail wheel has a clip, there's a spot on the bottom of the rudder to clip that into place, you just slide that into place and it locks in place. The carbon tubes for both the wing and the horizontal are stored in the fuselage. You use your single horizontal tube, slide each side of your horizontal into place and they just clip right into place with no screws involved. You'll use your wing tube. There are automatic connections on the fuse and the wing. You slide the wing into place and there are two quick connect screws. You simply press those down and turn and they're locked into place. At this point, just install your prop and spinner with a single screw and you're ready to rock and roll. This is hands down the easiest assembly of an airplane this size I've ever done. The Sportix has a 43.3 inch wingspan, it's 43.5 inches long. Our example weighed 2 pounds, 15.1 ounces with a 2200 4S pack. It has a Avian 45 amp Smart Light Brushless ESC, a 3536 1030 KV 14-pole motor, four 9-gram digital Metal Gear servos, and is intended for 2200 to 3200 3 and 4S packs. When it comes to features, to be such a simple sport plane, the Sportix is certainly not lacking in that department. My first impression was similar to what I felt for the RJG Decathlon, if you've seen that one when I first saw it. It's just well thought out and it's an attractive airplane. The paint scheme is really nice, the fit and finish is nice. There's definitive contrast between the yellow on bottom and the white on top that makes orientation very easy. The hinges are nice. There are CA hinges on all the control surfaces with foam hinging to seal the gap. The quick connect tabs for the wings are so convenient and so easy. You just push and rotate. That's all there is to taking off and putting the wings back on. You can keep the wing tube in the fuse. So storage and transport for this one is going to be a cinch. If you really want to go further, you can take the horizontals off the same way if you want, but at this size, that's probably not necessary, although for a 1.1 meter airplane, given the nature of what it is, an aerobatic airplane, it's a pretty good size airplane for that wingspan. It is a convenient top loader, which makes getting batteries in and out very easy, and there's plenty of room in that battery tray for even the largest of the recommended packs, and it has a really nice day bright LED set that just really sets the airplane off. The Bind and Fly Sportic comes equipped with an AR631 Plus receiver. That combined with the Avian ESC gives you the standard fare of smart telemetry if you have a compatible spectrum transmitter. It also means that it's equipped with AS3X Plus, which is one of the premier gyro systems in the industry right now. Spectrum has taken it to another level with that one, and you can program it and adjust it right there at your fingertips with your transmitter. It also comes equipped with a smart transmitter file. That means that when you bind the airplane, you'll have a choice. You can forego that, program the transmitter and set the airplane up yourself, or 
you can choose to confirm that and allow the receiver to upload that smart transmitter file directly to your transmitter. When you do that, literally everything is set up in your transmitter for you. All the rates are set, all the voice prompts are set. The only thing left for you to do is activate safe if you want to and set your timer. Other than that, everything else is done for you. You're going to want to make sure that you check the ball links and make sure that all the surfaces are centered, but that's pretty much it and the setup happens quick. Now there are some transmitters that are compatible with it and some that aren't. Those are listed here so that you know that. And just so you know, the setup we used on the Sportix was the smart transmitter file. We wanted to see how the airplane flew with that setup out of the box. So that is what we utilized and that's what you're going to see here in this maiden flight. So check this out. We had a good time playing with this airplane. We'll see you back here. We'll give you our final thoughts and flight impressions. Being a full maiden, the first part of this flight will be a little bit different than our standard review demos. first few passes are just trimming passes. The inverted passes are one of the things that I do to see if I'm happy with the balance. This 45 degree inverted upline is another thing that I do to check the balance. Now we're going to do a power off stall test. Comes almost to a stop drops straight down, doesn't drop a wing. I'm going to add a bit of power, get the nose up a little further, see if I can get it to drop one that way, and it won't. Very docile. Here we're going to check the roll rate both ways to see if there's any difference in how fast it rolls with versus against the torque. Here we're going to go ahead and shoot our first landing approach. It floated a lot more than I thought it would. Should have known, based on the stall characteristics, you have to get this thing really slow to get it to stop flying. So at this point I'm going to taxi it up, bring it to a stop, go in the transmitter. We won't make you sit through my transmitter changes. I'm just adjusting the expo a bit on every axis and then we're going to take off again and play with it. It is certainly not lacking in vertical performance on 4-cell.
you'll see me play around with Knife Edge a few times in this flight. It flies a bit like a pattern plane. You can tell that was part of the inspiration for the design. It can handle knife edge at a slower speed and manage a knife edge circle. There's a tiny bit of coupling in knife edge. I think maybe a slight balance change would fix that. And I'm not quite there with where I want the expo to be or the throw on the elevator, but it's pretty close. I think a little bit more elevator throw and a slight balance change and inverted Hario will be really nice. I'll know more when I get a bit more stick time on one. One thing I know for sure right now, I like it. The Sportix 1.1 is a nice airplane. I'm, I'm impressed with that stock setup. There's really not a lot that I do to change that, I don't think. I think when it's all said and done, I may add some elevator, and that's probably going to be it. I don't know that I'll change much else. I like it. I'm, I'm surprised by that, but I do. I think that the stock setup, if you download the smart setup file, is going to be good for most pilots out there other than the ones that just want to do the really extreme stuff and are going to add a lot of throw everywhere. If you're going to do that, then you may have to make an adjustment here and there. But other than those people, that smart setup file, I think, is on point. Now, when it comes to ease of flying, this is a docile plane that has very docile stall characteristics. It slows down well. It's not intimidating, and that's a good thing, because it was meant to bridge a gap. What my understanding is, this airplane was designed to be a second airplane after a trainer, so a skill level two, and it was meant to bridge the gap between kind of plain-looking sport planes like an ultra stick and fancier, far more aggressive airplanes that are more aerobatic than maybe some folks might want to try right after a trainer, like the Extra 330. I think this fits that bill perfectly. It is capable, not as capable as the extra, but still very capable and turned down a bit with minimal throws and a, a much lower rate. Somebody coming off an Aeroscout is not going to be terribly intimidated by this, so I think they hit that mark. I'm impressed. The fit, the finish, the looks, the styling, the quality, the flyability, 
$269.99 for the bind and fly, $249.99 for the plug and play. I think that is more than a fair price and you're certainly getting your money's worth with this airplane. So if you decide that you'd like to add one to your hangar, we'll put some links in the description where you can do just that. When you go through those links, it supports our channel. When you do that, we appreciate it. Thank you. So that is it. Sorry this had to be a little different format. We will see you next week with something cool with wings, and we will eventually see you with another video with another Sporix where we throw down with it. Take care.